Hey, everybody. It's Lon Seidman. We are on location today at a very cool location, the Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A. Uh, we are not very far from the launch pad where the Falcon Heavy behind me is going to rocket off into space uh, with a satellite that weighs about 6,000 kilograms. It's very heavy, and therefore it requires a very heavy-duty rocket to get it into space. And SpaceX has been doing a lot to make these launches a lot more affordable. And one of the things that this rocket's going to do is lift off the pad, and then most of it is going to come back. And later today, when it launches, we're going to witness that from the NASA press site, and we're also going to witness those cores coming back down. So those two rockets on the side there will detach a little bit into the launch. They will then come back down to Earth, and we'll watch that from the press site. The center core will also return, but it's going to land on a barge in the ocean. You've probably seen that happen before, but we'll see those two boosters on the side come down uh, at the same time. Now, what we're going to do is give you a look at what it's like to see a launch from a viewer's perspective. You can get much better imagery on the SpaceX channel, of course, but we're going to give you an idea as to what it might be like if you're here. Uh, looking with your own eyes and our cameras will see about what our eyes will see and our recorders will record what our ears hear. Now SpaceX has completely refurbished this launch pad. Uh, they've branded it. As you can see, it's got a nice new uh, black color to it. And up at the top there, you're going to see a walkway that is designed for astronauts to walk into the SpaceX crewed Dragon spacecraft that they tested not too long ago. That is going to take astronauts very shortly to the International Space Station, and they're going to walk down that uh, walkway there into their Dragon spaceship and go to the space station. That is what this pad is going to be used for in addition to launching those Falcon heavies. Now, one of the things that F SpaceX is really focused on is cost reduction. And the way they do that, first of all, is reusing those rocket cores. When they come back down, they don't just land for the sake of landing. They refurbish them and send them back up again. These three will be flying for the first time, but if they do come back successfully, they will most likely fly again on future SpaceX missions for their commercial customers or for NASA or the U.S. government. Interestingly, too, in that building behind me, they assemble the rockets horizontally, so they don't have to stack them up like uh, some of their competitors do. It allows them to work more easily with the rocket. They can actually spin it around in there uh, to get all the things that they need from the ground mostly, and they've been very good at introducing a lot of efficiencies uh, into modern space transit, transit, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see how other competitors respond to this. Uh, yesterday, we took a tour of the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, there's another commercial startup called Blue Origin that is headed up by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. They have assembled an enormous building here. Uh, they're also going to be working on uh, some of their own launches from Cape Canaveral very shortly as well. So this is a very exciting time for space transportation, and it's very exciting to be here, especially at the launch pad of all places. They won't let us get this close for the launch itself, but we will be bringing that to you very shortly, hopefully. Uh, so stay tuned, and we'll have some great views of the launch from the NASA press site. All right, so they let us inside the perimeter fence. They haven't done this before, at least when I've been out here, so I thought I'd give you a few more looks at the rocket from a different angle. Now, now, towards the top of the nose cone, you'll see there's some little fins up there, and that's what they use to guide it back down for landing. And all three of those cores that are coming back will have that. Uh, there is a second stage core on top of the middle one that won't be coming back. That will be uh, taking the satellite the rest of the way to orbit. And if you look down below, towards the bottom where it is uh, on the pad, there are some uh, black legs that will extend out uh, when the rocket is just about to land on either the ship or the two landing pads that are located not too far away from here. But altogether, this is a really cool thing to see in person, and I really can't stress enough the importance of trying to see one of these yourself if you're into space, because the scale of these things is just uh, something you have to see and appreciate in person, because these rockets are enormous. They're heavy. They're loud. They're bright. And it's something that you really can't get from watching a video or watching on television. So if you ever have a chance to get out here to watch a launch or from one of the other places that rockets go off from around the world, which are increasing every day, you definitely need to get a shot at doing that because it is really an experience that you won't forget. All right, let's go out to the launch area now and wait for countdown. So welcome to launch day. We are here at the Kennedy Space Center a day later than we originally planned for because they had a postponement yesterday. The upper level winds 
uh, were too high to launch the rocket. Uh, those are the winds above where we're standing, higher up uh, in the sky. And if those winds are too strong, they can uh, actually damage the rocket or destroy it if they are uh, blowing too hard. And they did not want to take that risk with a very expensive satellite at the top of that rocket. So what I wanted to do before we start uh, the countdown and following that uh, is give you some expectations about what we're going to see here. Remember, we want you to feel like you're here and get a good sense as to what it's like to be on the ground watching one of these things. We are at the NASA press site which is three miles away from the launch pad. So we have a very good view of the launch. Uh, the view of the boosters coming down will not be as good. We'll see them dropping uh, over the tree line there, but we may not see them actually land. Uh, but we should know very quickly if they did. And in future coverage of the Falcon Heavy, we'll try to get over to the NASA causeway where we can get a better view of those boosters coming down. But I really wanted you to hear what a launch of a rocket this substantial feels like and where we're standing is the best place to get that experience. Now, the reason why this rocket makes so much noise is that it is really three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, and they call it the Falcon 9 because each of those boosters has nine engines for a total of 27, and they're going to light that rocket up fairly early in the count. So you're going to see a lot of smoke coming out of the back of that rocket before it actually lifts off the ground. And it's going to take about 20 to 25 seconds or so for the sound to reach us here. So that'll be kind of neat to just see this huge rocket taking off with just us uh, screaming and hollering in the background. Uh, now what'll happen is when the boosters come down, uh, we're going to hear a lot of cool stuff. We're going to hear four sonic booms, two from each of those boosters. We're also going to hear those rockets light up uh, when they finally come down to land. So there's going to be some really cool sights and sounds here in just a few minutes. We've got about one hour and 20 minutes at this point uh, from when the Falcon Heavy is going to take off, and we will be back very shortly with the final countdown. Stay tuned. Okay, we're at 45 seconds now before launch. What you see is what I see. This is exactly the thing that I'm seeing with my eyes right now. We have about 36 seconds to go before Falcon Heavy lifts off the pad. It is go for launch, according to my friend over there. So we are 30 seconds to go here, 29 seconds. It's going to be an exciting thing to see. Remember, the first thing we're going to see is a lot of smoke coming out of the back of that rocket. Uh, we won't hear much for about 20 seconds until after those engines start up. So it's going to probably lift off the pad before we hear anything over here. Uh, we do have a lot of different audio recorders going and hopefully everything is going to work out. Got a couple of cameras running too. Uh, and here we go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we should have seen something by now. It looks like they're not doing it today. Oh, there it goes. I'm sorry. <laughs> we thought we'd see more smoke already. There it goes. Wow, is that bright. And that's one of the things that you can't appreciate uh, on TV is just the brightness of these rockets. And now the sound is coming. Listen to that. So we're hearing the sound echo back from the vehicle assembly building behind us. It is bright and loud. Look at it go. I'll tell you, for a heavy payload, that thing just went off the pad. Wow. That was something. It didn't look like it was going to go at first, but I'm glad it did because I had to go home tomorrow. Okay, what we should be seeing soon are the boosters separating, and you can see it now beginning to arc over, and we're still feeling that thump, and hopefully our audio recorders got that. It is an amazing thing to experience in person, the sound of these rocket launches, and you hear it echoing back from the VAB. All right, so it looks like we are now getting very close to those boosters shutting down. My camera's getting a little bit confused here. We'll have another camera hopefully picking up uh, some of this as it goes.
All right, I'm going to jump in here because we had a hard time finding the boosters after they separated. It was pretty high up there. Uh, but we did catch them on the way down. So here you can see the initial burn briefly as they slowed down on their way to the uh, landing zone. And then you can see just over the tree line just how fast they drop. And then right when they hit the tree line, uh, they light up those engines. Now, the one thing I was surprised about was how long it took for the sound of that landing to reach us. You can hear me asking that question. And where's the sonic boom? <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. There go. Whoa. 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 That was something. Yeah. That was cool. Took a while for that sound to get over here. Yeah. So you heard those sonic booms, but then you heard this higher pitch sound. <laughs> And that was the sound of those sonic booms bouncing off the vehicle assembly building that was behind us. And this is by far the loudest sonic boom I have ever heard in my life. It was quite something. Well, that launch pad is empty because that SpaceX rocket uh, is taking its cargo to space. However, most of that rocket is back on Earth. We saw the two boosters land over there. The center booster made it back to the ocean on the barge, so they were able to recover everything that they were hoping to, uh, which did not happen with the last Falcon Heavy launch. So this was a very successful uh, launch so far. Uh, we have to wait a little while into the mission here until that satellite is fully deployed. Uh, but it looks good at this point, and I'll tell you what, this was an awesome experience. I've seen the space shuttle launch from here. This one felt a little bit more thunderous than the shuttle did, primarily because it has a lot more engine on it, 27 to be exact, and that certainly uh, was felt here at the Kennedy Space Center. We even heard it echoing back from the vehicle assembly building over there. Uh, equally impressive was the landing. We didn't capture much of it in our location. Again, this is better suited to observe the launch where you're only three miles away from the launch pad but we did see those boosters come down and they just drop and right at the last minute right when you think they're going to hit the ground they turn on that motor one last time and they gently ease down and maybe the next time we come out we'll go over to the NASA causeway and watch that happen uh, but it was really something to see how fast those boosters come back we barely had time to find them in our camera lenses when uh, those boosters uh, made it back to their landing zone safely so this was an awesome experience it took a little bit longer to bring this to you than I had hoped just given all the schedule scheduling problems they had with the rocket and the weather and everything, but today was perfect. The weather, the rocket, uh, we got a great view of it, and I am so happy I could share it with all of you. Would love to hear your thoughts on it down below in the comments section. And what I might do is show you some of the other views that we got of the launch, and we're going to mix that in with some of our audio that we captured as well. So enjoy a few more views, and thank you all for watching. Not doing it today. Oh, there it goes. I'm sorry. <laughs> we thought we'd see more smoke already. There it goes. Wow, is that bright. And that's one of the things that you can't appreciate uh, on TV. It's just the brightness of these rockets. And now the sound is coming. Listen to that. There it goes. I'm sorry. <laughs> we thought we'd see more smoke already. There it goes. Wow, is that bright. And that's one of the things that you can't appreciate uh, on TV is just the brightness of these rockets. And now the sound is coming. Listen to that.
brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.